Our next groups are the firearms groups. We're going to start with the pros. Please give them all a big hand. Good morning. My name is Luke Ford, and this is Amy Chung, Jackson Taylor, Leah Gould, and our missing member is Abby Patterson. The first recorded use of a firearm was in 1364. Since then, the use of firearms has expanded tremendously. The growth of firearms has led to debate on whether or not firearms should be required in every South Sudan household. That's why today we'll be talking to you about the pros of firearms. Our pros include contributions to the economy, self-defense, entertainment, recreational use, and warfare. Please enjoy our presentation. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Jake. This is Sadie, Jesse, and Stearns. We're going to talk about the cons of firearms for South Sudan. So last year, there was over 40,000 40, deaths due to firearms in the United States alone. The numbers are increasing at an alarming rate each year. South Sudan is a new country that just recently broke away from their repressive dictator. They are still deciding on gun laws. We do not think South Sudan should require every household to own a gun. Omar al-Bashir, South Sudan's president, recently has, uh, has ruled South Sudan for over 30 years. Sudan's prime, Sudan's minister announced yesterday that South Sudan has overthrown their minister and they put him in jail. Thousands of citizens protested in a gunless protest against South Sudan and his former Omar. If guns were included in their protest, it would have gotten violent, leading to injury and even worse, death. So, South Sudan has been plagued by civil war and ruthless leaders for many years now. They just ended their civil war in which over 400,000 people have died. And as of yesterday, they overthrew their dictator. Yeah. Um, so, they have been, they need to keep in mind that now they are deciding whether or not to ban firearms in households. They need to keep in mind that they have plagued them historically, such as in the black market, suicides, hate crimes, and mass murders. The first and most obvious pro of firearms are the mass amounts of money being contributed to the U.S. economy and gun industries providing many jobs. According to Firearms and Ammunition Industry Economic Impact, companies that manufacture, distribute, and sell firearms and ammunition and hunting equipment employ more than 150,000 people and generate an additional 160 thousand jobs in supplying goods and services to manufacturers and distributors. In total, firearm industries pay more than $15 billion in wages and employ more than 300,000 people. Not only do firearm industries provide many jobs, they also contribute a huge amount of money to the U.S. economy. In 2018 alone, gun industries contributed $51.3 billion to the U.S. economy. Industries that manufacture firearms also generate tax venues. Um, in the U.S., gun industries paid $6.82 billion in taxes, including property inc income and sale-based levies. Without the use, without firearm industries and its contributions, the unemployment rate of 3.82% would increase dramatically and the economy would also face losses. One reason South Sudan must reconsider passing this law is mass murders. After just recently breaking away from the repressive dictatorship and civil war, they should not allow more citizens of theirs to die, especially when they had children fighting and dying for their country. Regulating gun access would prevent this from happening. Take a look at America's gun laws, for example, since we have some of the most least strict gun laws in the whole world. On February 14, 2018, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School had an active shooter. It resulted in 17 deaths and 17 injuries. According to Business Insider, on the 312th day of 2018, 307 mass shootings had already taken place in America. They also stated that gun violence is the leading cause of death, with some 11,000 people dying each year due to firearms. This should influence South Sudan's decision to not require every household to own a firearm. Another advantage of firearms is the right to self-defense. Without firearms, 
civilians have no way of protecting themselves, their homes, and their families. There are around 2.2 to 2.5 million defensive gun uses each year in the U.S. Firearms stop thousands of of home invasions each year per Procon.org. Guns are very useful even without having to pull the trigger. In fact, Robert Rodriguez and his wife woke up to a intruder in their home in their home armed with a knife in March of last year. The former police officer Rodriguez held the intruder at gunpoint until the proper authorities arrived. The intimidating appeal of firearms is enough to stop and stop an intruder. Many civilians use blanks or non-lethal bullets to stun and stop intruders. Without gun without firearms, civilians are very are excuse me. Civilians are defenseless against the evil that tend to tend intend to hurt or steal from other people. Suicide is a huge problem and affects every country in the world. It is one of the top 10 leading causes of death. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, in 2017, over 47,000 people committed suicide in the United States. And as you can see in this chart, over 50% of those deaths were, had firearms involved. So, South, many of South Sudan's citizens struggle from mental disorders such as depression and post-traumatic stress disorder due to the recent civil war. And when untreated, untreated and undiagnosed can lead to suicide. Part of owning a gun is preventing these things from happening. And they also need to keep in mind that suicide is not only a tragedy, but it's also very expensive. Last year, the United States paid $69 million in suicide attempts and injuries. And that debt to a country of this size can be crippling to their economy and their functionality. Let the authorities handle the firearms. All citizens should worry about is helping those who need aid. Another pro of firearms is that they play an important role in the production of video games for our entertainment. The Entertainment Software Association says that 90% of American children and over half of all Americans play video games. The average American gamer plays about six hours a week, which is almost an hour every day. The ESA also says that 90% of the most popular video games involve violence. According to Procon.org, Half of the top 50 most popular video games include violence, with gun violence being the most common form. Brocon also says that there are over 2,000 M-rated games involving guns in circulation today. According to an article in the New York Times, violent video game sales have more than doubled since 1996, showing that their popularity is still growing and this would not be possible without the involvement of firearms. The citizens of South Sudan know the power of firearms as seen in the recent war with Sudan. The UN estimated in 2006 that 200,000 persons had died as a result of the conflict. Citizens know the capabilities of guns, so they're afraid of people wielding these weapons. This gives gun owners the power of intimidation. So during hate rallies, they'll carry firearms and intimidate their opposing others. The Washington wrote that in the U.S., Firearms are used or threatened to be used in 43,000 hate crimes from 2010 to 2014. Sorry. South Sudan must take into consideration that firearms are used as an intimidating device, and because of this, hate groups and individuals will carry firearms to intimidate others to do as they want. But when a mentally ill citizen is in, is Enraged, he may shoot, causing injury or death in the form of a hate crime. Especially because just two days ago, South Sudan citizens overthrew their president, and now there are going to be many conflicts about what to do next. Another part of firearms is recreational use. Recreational use includes hunting, a shooting range, clay shooting, and many more uses. It is stated by Travis Mitchell of Cape Research Center that 34% of men and 23% of women use firearms for hunting for a total of 57% of the adult population in the United States use a firearm for hunting. When it comes to a shooting range, it is not only adults who can shoot there. Children ages 13 to 60 may shoot rifles or guns and ages 16 to 18 may shoot rifles, pistols, or shotguns. 
Both, however, need a signed consent form from a parent and guardian and need to be accompanied by a parent or guardian to enhance their safety. Travis also states that 43% of men and 31% of women in the, adult, in the U.S. use a firearm for hunting. For people to use a firearm for hunting, they must hold a valid hunting license and must have taken a safety course. While most people who use a firearm are over the age of 18, there is a large amount of children who can use a firearm without a hunting license. That is known as Youth Hunting Weekend. Currently, there are over 1,225,000 guns owned by civilians in South Sudan today. But currently, none of them are legal. South Sudan acquires guns from many surrounding countries using the black market. The black market is a big problem because you can bring guns in that are faulty or cheap and they can backfire and hurt people. Many guns come from the extensive United States black market. The United States exports over half a million guns through the black market each year to countries like South Sudan and surrounding countries. Most of the guns include handguns because they are easy to hide and easy to take in without detection from authority or other people. The black market is also helping the dollar, the pound of South Sudan deteriorate. The pound of South Sudan is hurting their economy because the black market is making it less stable. Recently, the United States introduced our money into the South Sudan pound to help their dollar, to help their pound increase and to help their economy. Right now, as shown in the picture, there are over 19,000 child soldiers in South Sudan, most of which are males. They use females for nurses and doctors, except when they're running low. They also use females to fight, which is a big problem. And that is according to Cambenia. This is our missing member, Abby Patterson. Firearms are very important to our military and to other countries' military. They allow our country to easily defend our land and to conquer attacking nations. An example of this is when the U.S. participated in World War II, as shown here. Um, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, U.S. troops were sent all over Europe, and they helped defend countries, and they shared and traded firearms with them and were able to defeat the attackers. An example that shows that without the use of firearms, civilizations were destroyed is the Tuscarora War. This conflict arose um, after colonists started settling in the North Carolina region. As more and more people started settling there, the Native Americans started to get uneasy and pretty soon raids were being made on both villages. The colonists ended up winning the war though because they had more advanced weapons, firearms. Um, without the firearms, the colonists could have easily been destroyed and the American Indian society could be in a very different situation today. Fire easily defend our land and to conquer a cap. Should South Sudan require each household to acquire at least one gun? The answer is no, because although firearms propose many benefits, when a mentally ill citizen has access to one of these weapons, suicide, hate crimes, mass murders, and the black market are all consequences caused by guns. South Sudan must do detailed background checks, mental illness checks, and require each citizen to take a gun safety course before allowing anyone to own a gun. Also, if there's a child, mentally disabled, or mentally ill citizen in the gun owner's household, they must keep the gun in a secure area in a locked safe. After all the tragic events South Sudan has been through, they should not allow more of their citizens to die. Not requiring a firearm would help improve their current state. Human life is so much more precious than a firearm, no matter what benefit it may bring whether that be sports, hunting, recreational use, or the economy. In conclusion, there are many pros to firearms, 
including the contribution to the economy, the right to self-defense, benefiting warfare, and more. Although the pros of firearms can be beneficial to society, we, be, we believe that South Sudan should not require each home to own a firearm. Instead, they should have specific trained personnel who can prevent the rise of future oppressive leaders. Thank you. United States doing anything to stop or discourage weapons from being smuggled out of the country into the South Sudan? My research did not take me in that direction, but what I've seen is South Sudan, 40% of the guns are taken from dealers that acquire the guns in their stores, and they put them under the counter, and people get them and take them to South Sudan and countries like it. Um, with the video games, uh, have you, were there any, uh, say, I can't remember, 51% were violent or had guns in them? Is that percentage different in countries that don't have guns? Uh, yes, those were the statistics for just the United States. Do you know if those same games are popular in countries that don't have weapons? I don't know. One more question. I'm actually going to say that mentally ill people should own a gun. I said that they should do mental illness checks to prevent them from owning a gun. And if somebody has a mental ill person in their household, they need to keep the gun locked. Be the person that's perfectly fine and has passed all the tests and owns the gun. Very good.